Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Kohler. I am a retoucher from Germany and in this video I will show you my favorite masking techniques and um, it's a, a bit separated in different chapters and you will find the, the direct links to the chapters in the description below this video so you can jump direct, directly to the chapters or you can skip chapters if you think you can miss the basic part and jump directly into the really exciting stuff. So make sure you share this video and comment and like and whatever you can do with this video. Um, I really appreciate it and have a nice day, have fun and take care. So what are you using masks for? And there are obviously a few um, I have a few examples for you and obviously the first one is for, for you, you use masks for object, object extraction that means you can for example um, paste models into new backgrounds or objects or whatever so for composite work you need to mask the model so you have a transparent background and you just paste the model into the new background. So this is the, the first and the most obvious um, example where you need masks. The next one is um, if you do portrait work you can um, use masks if your background is crap like in this image. So I replaced the background with something completely new and which makes the image better. So you need obviously a mask to um, make the background of the model transparent and so you can just add a new background in. In the next example um, I'm using masks for, for color, not color grading, for color um, uh, correction. So um, just switch this off. So this is the, the image how it came out of the camera and the colors have like different masks for the dress and for the background and for the skin and for the headpiece. So I need to be able to make masks for all these uh, different kinds of different parts of image, the different areas in this image and this is what I need masks for. And the last example is like a, a fashion image here um, where I need to um, um, apply masks or use masks for uh, things like the background. So it can make color grading on the background, can color grade the skin, or color correction on the skin. I can adjust the shoes here, the shoes to fit the color scheme and obviously the dress. So. This is all, if I, if I need to, to work on a, on a part of an image, then I need a mask. And this is what, why I'm using masks all the time. And this is why I spend a lot of time in um, making my masks as good as possible and as fast as possible. Um, I don't rely on the, on the masking tools in Photoshop that much because I am a control freak. So I, um, I'm working mainly with channels and um, with a few tricks. And this is what I want to show you today. In this chapter I'm talking about the basic tools for selections because selections are mostly the, the step before you create a mask. And I want to show you how to create selections and what the main tools are for selections, for manual selections and what you can do with them. So I'm using the rectangular mask, which is just, uh, you create an area by clicking on one corner and then just create the selection. Um, if I create a new selection, the old one disappears. So I'm only able to make one area selected. Um, when I hold down the shift key, I can create a second selection and obviously I can connect them. So it creates one selection of everything that is, well, I can just extend the mask by doing this. 
By pressing the Alt key, I can remove parts from that selection and I can create something like that. Just modern art and I'm really good in that. So I've created that mask by um, holding down the Shift key and the Alt key. Shift key to um, add something to the mask and the Alt key to um, get rid of something. If I press the Alt and the Shift key together, then it creates a mask based on what's masked, what's already masked, and what's, um, what's the new mask. So it takes a selection of the selection, basically. So if I just want this part here, press the Shift key and the Alt key, and I'm selecting this, and then I have only the selection of the selection. Right? And this applies for all kinds of selections. So it doesn't matter if I change the, um, um, the tool to the elliptical mask tool, I can add a mask here with the elliptical mask tool. Or I can even use the lasso tool where I can just press the shift key and make my freehand mask or freeform mask. So this is this is essentially, so you can, you, you have to remember shift key to add something, alt key to remove something from your selection, and shift and alt creates the selection of the selection. So Photoshop has some automated tools for um, making a selection. So to show you this, I'm filling this with black. So I have one layer, this is filled with the black color the selection and I can remove the selection by command D or when I have an active selection I just have a selection uh, tool here and I just click in the image and so I can remove the selection. Command D or um, just click in the image. So there are a few a few tools to um, um, to create selections. For example, the quick selection tool is very um, well. It's very famous, but it's also kind of annoying. But people love it. So I'm just creating. I'm just painting here around the that area, and then it creates that selection for me. Also, I can use the um, the Alt and the Shift key here. And if I want to remove something from the selection, I can use the Alt key. And if I want to add something, I can press the Shift key. So let's add this. And then I have here everything selected, which is awesome. If I want to select everything, I just use Command uh, or Command A. So I can just select everything. Command D, deselect Command A to select everything. I can also start by selecting everything and then use the Alt key and I just remove the black parts here. So everything is selected here, the white part is selected and the black part isn't selected. So that's how selecting things work in Photoshop. In the next chapter we're going to see what masks are. So in this chapter I'm going to talk about masks. What are masks? What I'm using masks for? Well, covered that before. So I'm just talking about what masks are. So if you have multiple layers in Photoshop, let's create a new layer. Um, on my layer one I've got the gradient and on my second layer I'm going to create um, just a red, yeah, a red kind of thing. Um, when I create a mask on this layer here, I'm going to create it with that button. Um, looks kind of like a, like a camera here. And then I see in the, uh, in the layers panel, panel um, I see this white area here. And when I use a brush or whatever tool and I paint here, let's increase the size here a little bit, when I paint with a black brush, then it reveals everything that's below. So everything that's white is visible and everything that's black isn't visible. So 
And that's the, the, the basic of masking. So if you imagine the, the model here, I'm going to make everything that's around the model um, make this transparent. And this is basically what you do. But obviously, you're doing this not with the brush because it doesn't make sense. Um, so this is this is what what masking is. So um, you're just revealing the the layers below the one that you are masking, and obviously you can um, delete that mask by just dragging it to the recycler icon here, and if you do so, you get the chance to apply it. So it gets a. Um, becomes a, a, a pixel layer, or you can cancel this, or you can just delete this layer. If you delete it, then you're just losing the mask, but not the layer. So layers and, and layer masks um, are, um, they can handle transparency. So that means if I create on that layer mask a gradient, from black to white, like so, it creates a gradient. It means um, on the bottom here, it is white. That means I can see the, the red layer. And on the top, it's transparent because I see the gradient, which is below that red layer. And this is pretty, pretty awesome. So um, this is the transparency of masks and everything that's white. It's not transparent and everything that's uh, black is completely transparent. So, um, and that, that is something that's really important if you, if you choose the tool for, for um, creating masks. Because if you use the pen tool, for example, you don't have that, um, the transparency. So you, um, you can just create either it's um, visible or it's not visible, it's transparent or not. But all the stuff that's between for uh, dresses, for hairs, for, I don't know, for, for um, um, things that are not in focus, so they are blurring into the black background somehow, that's where you need something like, um, like a transparent mask. And this is what you what you can do with masks. And I'm going to show you how um, these masks are created in a second. So this is what you can do with, with masks. If you um, have a look at the layers panel here, panel here, I'm making this a little bit um, bigger by just selecting this one. So in between the layer and the layer mask is this little icon here. And let's create uh, shortly something to show you. So, so I have this mask with this little dot here. And I can move that uh, with just the move tool. And then I move both of these layers. Um, when I click on this one, on this little um, I can here in between, I don't know how it's called in English, um, I can move the mask without moving the, the layer below. So this is quite handy if you make that James Bond intro, ding, 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 ding. This is very awesome. I think they did it like this. And also, if you apply filters to the mask, like, um, like a blur filter, let's I have to do something. I have to um, paint this with a um, with a pattern, so you can see this. Okay, so I've got this pattern, and this is just a, a layer with a pattern, and I've got this little hole here inside. So if I use my filter, like a blur filter, Gaussian blur, so everything gets blurred. The, the mask gets blurred and also the background. This you can change that behavior. So let's get back, step back. If I um, click on that icon here in between, I can either select the layer and apply that filter, the Gaussian blur, to that layer, or if I click on the um, on the mask, I can 
apply that filter to the mask. So this is very interesting. Um, if they are connected, it's always applying both. Be careful if you, um, if you want to paint on that mask, you have to click on that mask before, otherwise you're painting on the layer. So you can paint on the layer and you can paint on the mask. It, it depends on, on what, you, what you select and this is uh, very important. So this is the, the basic about, about the transparency, about um, creating masks and um, if you create a mask and you have a selection first, then it will make this black. So this is very, also very interesting. So if I have a selection open and I create a new mask, it will create a mask where is, everything is black and or it's black in the mask so it's not visible and whatever is selected will be visible and this is what we are going to use in the next chapters. So in this chapter I'm going to talk about the channels and the channels are really really powerful when it comes to masking and so I want to make sure you understand what channels are and um, what they are doing. So um, first of all I am flattened this image so uh, we can we have the pure channels here. So channels are basically there are three channels in the RGB um, image. It's just the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel. And these channels, you can go to the channels tab here in the, in the layers panel. If you don't see this, you can go to window and channels. So you have the channels here. So the channels are really, really powerful. They, um, I've got some extra channels here. I'm gonna delete this. So basically this is what your channels look like. So you've got your RGB channel which is the combination of all three color channels. The red channel is um, basically, the red channel is a mask for, um, for a red layer. So that means you have a, um, a mask where everything that doesn't contain red is black and everything where red is, is in the image, it's going to be white here. The green channel, however, is a channel for, for all green colors. So if you look at the dress here, this is nearly pure red. So if I go to the green channel, there is no green in this, um, in this red dress. So this layer mask or this channel is black. However, the skin has a lot of green, so it's more white or whitish. Um, or gray and the background is kind of green so it has also um, a lot of gray here so there is green and the blue channel however is um, well it's kind of grayish here because I don't have a lot of blue variations here but you can see the skin also has a lot of blue and uh, the dress has a little bit less blue and the shoes don't have blue at all. So let's go back to the layers and let's paint a little bit with a few colors. So first I'm um, creating some uh, red dot here and then I go to the uh, green which is 120 degrees here. And create a green one and then I go to 240 which is purely blue and then I'm going to create a little bit of yellow which is 60 and paint this here and create a little bit of cyan which is 180 and create a little bit of magenta which is 240 uh, not 240, 300, sorry. So 
So I've got my three primary colors and I've got um, three additional colors which are mixed between um, the primary. So uh, the secondary color yellow is mixed of red and green, the secondary cyan is mixed of the primary green and primary blue and magenta is mixed by um, primary blue and primary red. If I look in my channels now, you can see the red channel. The red channel has all the information, so it's completely revealed, completely white. Um, it completely reveals the red channel. It also reveals completely the yellow channel because yellow is a mix of complete red, complete um, green. And magenta is also revealed because magenta is the mix of blue and red. If I go to my green channel, I can see the primary green. Let's switch back here. Primary green is visible, is completely white. Um, and also yellow and cyan, because yellow and cyan also have uh, all the green information. And if I go to the blue channel, I got obviously blue um, as a white mask and cyan and magenta, because these are mixed between two primaries. So you can say this is um, basically how colors are mixed and you can use that information to create your masks and this is very very powerful. So um, you need to understand that these channels are basically, they are basically masks and you can use them. And how can you use them? by clicking um, control and or command on a Mac and click on that icon in the channels, I will get a selection of this channel. So if I create a new layer and while well, this was the red channel, so let's fill this with red for a second. Um, uh, first I create the mask and then fill it with red. So I've got a selection active and as I told you before if you have a selection and then you create a mask it will create the mask based on your selection. By alt click on that mask I can see the mask and the mask looks exactly like my red channel. Let's go back to the channels and have a look at the red channel. So this is absolutely the same as this one. So, and so if I fill this with, um, let's fill this RGB. So, let's see it, and let's fill this with red foreground color. Yes. So this is basically what my red information in the image looks like. If I do the same for the green channel and the blue channel and I'm using the layer mode additive, then I'm adding these this three colors and I will get the same, exactly the same image. So because these colors are added. However, let's go back to our image and create a mask for the dress based on our channels and in the next chapter I will also show you how you can refine your, um, your selections with basic tools. In this chapter I will show you how I create my masks um, based on the channels and I will show you how I um, refine the edges, not with the refine edges tool but with a brush and yeah let's do this. So first I'm opening my channels and I will have a look at what the channels are in this image. So what I want to do is create a mask for the dress. So let's have a look at the red channel. Everything that's white in the red channel has information of red. So obviously the, the dress is pretty much red. The background is not so much red, the hairs are pretty dark so they, they don't have a lot of red and well the skin has a bit of red. Let's have a look at the green channel. The red dress doesn't have green in it 
or not much. I mean, the highlights are a little bit greenish, but um, that's uh, it's not an issue. The skin, however, has a lot of red because this is uh, the skin tone is always a mix between red and green, a bit of blue. Um, so I, I've got quite a good contrast, a good separation between the skin and the dress, also between dress and background. Only here in the in the shadows, I have a bit well of an issue here. Let's see if the blue one is better or the red one. No, I think well the the, the red channel does have the the separation here. But overall, the green channel is my base channel. This is the channel I'm using to, um, to create my mask for the dress. So when I do a right click on my channel, then I can select here, duplicate channel. I can name it. Green copy is an awesome name and I stick to this. And I'm clicking on the eye tool here on the, on the little checkbox here to see actually that channel. So what I want is a completely black channel with the white dress. So my first step is to invert this thing by command I. And so now you can see I've got um, a nearly white dress and um, dark skin and light a background. And I can use that to create my mask. First, I'm clicking Control L or Command L to open the Levels dialog. Um, take care here, this is a destructive uh, thing. So this is not an adjustment layer, this is um, applied to this channel. What I'm doing is I'm increasing my black by moving that slider to the right. And you see the skin gets really, really black. So, until I got more contrast between uh, the dress and the background. I want as much contrast as possible. So I'm moving that sliders. I always have a look at the histogram here, so I don't want to cut too much from the, from the darks here, otherwise I get a strange edge. Um, and I don't want to adjust the whites right now. I could probably go a little bit back so this becomes even more bright, but this is, this is tricky. So um, I think I stick to it as it is. So I click OK and this is applied to this channel or this copy of the channel. And what I do now is I'm using a brush to refine this. So my, my job is to make everything black that I don't want in my mask and I only want to have the dress as completely white. Uh, remember, if it's not completely white, it will be transparent. I don't want to, be, uh, to have a transparent uh, mask here, so I need to make that whole stuff, the whole shadows here, um, make them white. So I'm using a brush, <coughs> um, make it a little bit smaller, a brush in the mode Vivid Light and smoothing at zero and flow at 10%. So I will show you what it does, make it a little bit bigger, so like this one, yeah. If I paint with white here, you can see that it's mostly affecting the whites in the image here, whilst the black stays black. If I paint with black over this, I get the opposite effect. So, and if I paint over the same area here, I get a pretty good, a pretty good result here. So it's, this is the perfect tool to, well, increase the contrast and make a good black and white mask out of the, um, the channel. So this is basically what I'm using to refine my mask by hand. So what I'm doing is I take a white brush and first well, a white brush and I paint on the edges of the dress here. 
So I'm at 10% flow, so I have to paint a little bit, but um, I think it's better to paint with low flow here because it, it adds up until I have a really, really good channel. So. Just creating a nice edge where it's possible to create that edge. Um, this area here is, is a problem, so I'm just keeping this out for the moment. So, like that, that, so. Basically, that's my dress. Now I switch to black and I do the the same same thing here, a little bit bigger, and I don't have to be super precise because it will affect the darks or the dark grays way more than the brights or the whites. So um, I can really really create that mask um, in, a, in a very very fast way. So here we got something special. We'll take care about it in a second. This is going to be done with another tool. So and here the edge, so, like this. So our computer is not the fastest right now, but it's working. So. Let's take care about this one here. So I've got a little bit of contrast and this little bit of contrast is enough for me to, to um, create a black and white mask. So I'm going to paint with white here. So I've got a purely white area. Should be kind of purely white. And and then change the, the foreground colors no. to black, make my brush a little bit smaller and I try to increase the contrast here. And as you can see even that, that little bit of contrast is, is enough to create that that mask it takes a little bit longer because it's not doing that much but in the end I will have a good selection so and the rest is just a tool um, a job for the pencil so let's refine this and use the white one so, to make the edge really nice. Also here, can paint with white. So get a bit of edge, and here, so, creating that edge. So, so this is also an area where I have to, to increase the contrast. And unfortunately, there is actually no real uh, contrast so I have to recreate it somehow so I try to first I try to increase it and then later I will change the, um, the brush to normal brush and going back with the uh, down with the size and just paint this um, curve I want here so just need to make it a little bit just need this one so go back to vivid light increase brush size and fill it so also the hand can be dark so here I've got a red fingernail the red fingernail obviously also needs to be um, deselected so what I'm using is normal 
and paint the fingernail black. So, as this is a mask for uh, color correction, it doesn't need to be super precise. It just, even if there is something that's like, like grayish, it's mm, not that much of a problem because you will uh, not be able to see this. Um, but still, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to make this mask a little bit better than necessary just to show you the process. So basically I'm switching between um, black brush, white brush, um, in mode vivid light or in mode normal. So, and here we got some stuff that I actually don't need. So I'm getting rid of this. So, and I could either um, um, put the opacity or the flow up to 100% and change to normal light, but I could also use a second tool. I prefer the, the pencil tool. And with the pencil tool, I can just have 100% um, opacity. And so I'm just painting over that areas I don't need, like this. So. Okay, so all that stuff that's unclear, just get rid of this. So, got some vivid light job, and also this stuff, don't need this one, get rid of it. So, so. Here we, are, we got something that's also, um, here we have skin and here we have dress. So I'm going back to my brush tool and I'm still at the, at the, with the black brush, with the black brush in vivid light. So I can increase that until it meets the, the, the dress here. Then I go back to my white brush and I can make the, the remaining stuff in white. So this one is all goes black and I think that's basically it. So now back to the pencil and resize it to about, I don't know, maybe 1000 pixel, 500 pixel up and black normal and just get rid of everything that's not necessary for that mask. Like the shoes, I don't need the shoes here. And all that stuff. So usually um, when I'm not talking, this is a very fast process. So I don't think I'm spending more than two minutes in that process. <clears throat> but it takes a little bit longer when I'm explaining every step. Usually I'm also using shortcuts, so I have a, two shortcuts. One is the letter B for the, for the brush and I've got the letter C for the, um, for the pencil. So I can really switch super fast between these two tools. So then I've got something left here. It's also like this. So, and bam, that's it. So I think I've got a pretty decent mask of my dress here. So when I look at the whole image, this is the whole image, and this is the mask for the, for the dress. And now I can simply do a control click or command click on the Mac for that selection or for that channel. So I'm clicking with a control click on that icon here on the on the um, little image. Go back to my layers and now I create a folder or a group, it's called a group, and I click on the little add mask tool. So now I've got a group with that mask and everything I put here into this into this group will be affecting my background image. So when I do um, 
um, I don't know, color balance, for example, then I can really work on that dress and I can make it a little bit more reddish. So, and it's only affecting the, the dress and not the rest of the image. So, before and after. <clears throat> I can use the same technique for, for the shoes and uh, for the background. I think the background is pretty, pretty straightforward because it will um, be only, it's only green information here in the image. One important thing if you go to the channels, I'm here on the color balance um, adjustment layer now. When I go to the, to the channels and I click on the channels, nothing happens. So. If I want to click on the channels, I need to be on a pixel layer, means on the background layer or on a new layer or something. So now I can select the channels and it will show me the channels. So um, let's do another test. Let's try to make, um, so this is the dress. Let's try to make a um, selection for the background. And for that, I'm using something that's called Select Color Range. Let's see what the color range does. So the color range basically has a fuzziness slider, which is, gives me the, the, the range of colors I'm affecting. And I think it's working pretty good. Just use, it's just, just shows me the, um, everything but the dress, so that's pretty good. I could use that, kind of use that for um, <laughs> for my masking as well. So it's kind of kind of strange here. Ah, because I'm already on that dress layer. That's the reason why my sampling is not working. So I've tried to create a color range on that dress layer. That's the reason why my um, select color range did a really good job in masking that part of the image. That's obviously not what I want to do. I want to go back to my background layer and do a selection color range. And now when I click on it, it's like this, even better. So I can select different parts of the image. And if I click on the shift key, I can select multiple parts of this image. So I think this is a pretty decent, uh, pretty, pretty decent mask here. So um, I'm using this as a basis for my uh, background selection. So I'm creating a new folder and, sorry, that was wrong, going back, step back, create a new folder and apply a mask and this is going to be the mask for the background. So let's do a little trick. I'm using um, uh, something like, um, uh, let's take a U and saturation layer and I really crank this up. So it creates, um, I can see what's going on on that mask because of this um, U and saturation layer that is pretty, pretty um, hefty actually. So now I'm using my Vivid Light Brush and I'm on the mask and I'm creating a mask for that. So that means I'm masking everything out. It, it's not necessary for that mask, for the background mask. And this is a really fast process. I like the skin, I don't want to have the skin on this. So, like this, and the shoes. Okay. And now I'll go to white because I really want to have the background all in the image or in that mask. And I'm Adjusting this. So in, in Vivid Light, I just take care about the edges. 
Um, the big picture means all the, the stuff that really needs to be um, completely done like like here, the, the, the bottom of the image. I will make this with a pencil because I don't need to paint a thousand times over this. Doesn't make sense. So, okay, now I've got a mask for my background. I need a little bit of work here. So, and here, and here, and obviously I need a black one for this. So, so now I have a background layer. This um, UN saturation layer, I can just put it into the garbage can. And now I've got two things. One, the dress, and the other one, everything else. If I do an alt click on the layer, I can see that I did a pretty messy job here. So um, I'm going to fix this. And in this right brush, so all that stuff, get rid of the really dark stuff. And yeah, and then going back to my brush and make it like this. So So as I said, I don't need to be super precise. This is just for this tutorial. Usually I'm um, not really careful with the masking for color correction because I don't need to. But for the sake of the video, I'm doing this going a little bit further. So, and so on. So now I've got a mask for my background and I can just use a, well, go to color balance and I uh, can make the, the background maybe a little bit more like a, like a dirty green or something like that. I'm back with a little luminosity. So like, like this, like a little bit more of green. And I make it a little bit darker, so I'm going to use a UV and saturation layer and just go back with the lightness. So I've got two um, layers, two adjustment layers, and these are affecting everything that's masked in this selection here. So before and after. <clears throat> so now I've got two uh, masks and this is background and this is dress and because of these are masks in my image I got them here so I've got my green copy layer and I've got my background mask so what I can do is I can use my background mask and I can um, just do a control click and I'm creating a new mask and fill this with white. So now I've got a mask for my background. Let's invert this. So um, now I've got a mask for my, for my dress and I've got a mask for the whole model. So that means if I'm doing a selection of the dress, go back to my, to my um, model layer and I fill this with black. Now I've got a mask of the skin. So I don't need to uh, take too much care about that. Making the remaining stuff, making this black. Let's use another tool, the pencil. So get rid of these edges. So these edges are basically, um, they came from, from the transparency in the, in the area between the foreground and the background or the mask and not masked areas. So there would take so fast process. So now I've got a very nice selection of my model. 
Um, I really want to have a channel for my for for the skin only. So the skin only means what I don't need is the hairs. So let's see what has the most in which channel do the hairs have the most contrast against the background and it's the green channel. So I'm duplicating this green channel and duplicate green channel. Green copy two is an awesome name. I keep this and doing a levels control L and making this really really um, making this as contrasty as possible so and now I'm making actually inverting this and making everything black around this area besides the besides the hairs the hairs will stay white um, brush tool, black, vivid light, so get rid of this and I don't need that much of a selection, I just need the hairs and also here I don't have to be super careful, I rather have a little bit more um, of that. So like this and then the pencil and paint over it. So okay, so that's enough. Now I've got this selection. This is a selection of the hairs. Um, I'm doing a control click on that layer, means I've got the hairs selected and everything around the hairs is not selected. Now let's get back to this channel and I'm using the, the black brush, the le black pencil actually. I'm just painting over this so I'm taking out the hairs of this selection. So, all right. Now I've got that channel for, um, for the skin tones. Control click on this, makes a selection out of this and I'm creating a group, create the, the mask for it and this is skin. Actually it's skin and shoes, but for the sake of this tutorial I think you understand what I'm doing. So now let's create a color balance and as you can see I can adjust the shoes and, and the, the skin but not the hairs and not the dress which is pretty awesome. So if I really want to go in this um, fashion kind of look where the skin ha hasn't a lot of um, saturation I can just adjust this and here we are. So. And here we have the background and here we have the dress and this is the before and the after. And so this is basically this is the process. I can always go back and adjust things like this one for example. So um, here my mask is not, not so awesome. I mean um, there's obviously something missing. So going to my brush and still in vivid light and I need to to adjust this. I can just paint on it because this really needs to be black, yes. So like that and there's also here a little bit missing so it needs to be white on this one. Let's use the pencil. Every time uh, when the, uh, if something is really, really white, then the vivid light pencil doesn't, or vivid light brush doesn't have any effect. So you need to switch to a different tool. But I think you get the idea this 
So and this needs to be black. Don't want this to be affected. So I recommend checking all the all the the masks before you create new masks out of of it out of it. Um, I created a mask, and um, took that as base and um, took out the skin tones. So that's the reason why I have the the problem on both of these layers. And this is not a good idea. So always check for problems in your masking and then create a mask out of this one. But I think you get an idea of how fast you can do um, um, how you have total control over your mask and it's non-destructive it's just adjustment layers and you can always go back if you work for a client and you said well the model is too, is too I don't know it's too she needs a little bit more color in, in her skin and you just go back with the opacity here and bring back the original skin tone if you want. So this is pretty, pretty straightforward. And obviously you can use these masks over and over. <coughs> That's it for, for masking parts based on channels. So in the next chapter, I will show you how you can make this process even faster by using adjustment layers that are temporarily there to make your masks better and faster. Actually, it's um, increasing the color contrast. In this section of the video, I will show you how to increase the color contrast or the contrast between the channels with um, the with temporary adjustment layers, which is pretty powerful. So this image, I shot this image a while ago, and um, I want to have a mask for the dress, and I want to have a mask for the for the skin. And to do this, well, let's have a look at the channels. In the red channel, I don't have much of a contrast. So this is. It's going to be quite a pain to mask and also the green channel well it does have a little bit more information and the blue channel well everything is like gray so and this is not really nice to to create a mask with channels so what i'm doing first is i create the hue and saturation layer and i'm adjusting the saturation so the saturation is the, the, the pureness of a color. So that means when I add saturation, I'm creating more of a separation between these channels. So if I have a 100% saturation on red, for example, I don't have any information on the green or the blue channel. If I have 100% saturation on yellow, I don't have any information on the, on the blue channel, but I have a lot of information on the um, on the red and the green channel. So I'm using the saturation slider to increase that. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the channels now. So obviously going back to my background layer, have a look at the red. So it doesn't work at all. Green channel works better and the blue channel, well, it gets strange highlights, but I think the green channel doesn't look that bad. So what I need to do next is get rid of green information for the skin because I want to have the green channel um, there, the, 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 the skin should be as dark as possible on the, on the green channel. So let's create a selective color and go to my neutrals. Let's see what happens if I add a little bit of cyan. Cyan is made of blue and um, green. So this is obviously affecting my green channel. I'm not going too far. Let's see what magenta does. So it's magenta, the mix of red and blue. Also, I could use that. And the yellow, I want to get rid of yellow to increase the color contrast between these two and yeah I'm not going too far here and then I can go to my magenta and 
try what's happening here nothing um, okay though there is basically this is magenta but there is no magenta information on the magenta channel so what I'm going to, going to do next is I'm using a UN saturation layer to make I have I have two uh, secondary colors here yellow and magenta um, yellow is made of green and red and magenta made of green and blue uh, blue and red so if I use my U slider and go up to 30 it will change my two secondary colors to the primary colors means the yellow is getting green and the magenta is getting red so let's have a look at the channels so my red still unusable and my green is pretty decent and my blue is also not usable anymore but my green channel is really really this this is a nice base for for a mask so i can really use that channel and it's going to be a very fast process let's have a short test i'm not going to go through all this again so don't worry but just a quick test what's happening if i go up with the size to 170 let's make it black and let's see what happens so I can just paint over it because the, um, the dress is nearly is nearly white on that mask so this is pretty pretty awesome so you can really use this to have a mask well I'm messed up here in this area and probably would need to have another channel for this but you can see how it is in which direction this goes so and I can use that to create a mask go back to my layers um, create a group mask that group and these three layers which I use to create the channel I can throw them away delete them well actually just need them one by one so so now I have my my good old image and when I go to um, U in saturation I can just increase the saturation of the dress but not affecting the skin at all and this is pretty pretty powerful because um, imagine to mask this by um, any other tool it's going to be a mess it's a, a lot of work and um, a lot of stress so this um, temporary adjustment layers is very very powerful if you use channels imagine the channels are color channels so if you adjust the color in your image you're um, changing the channels so you can use these as temporary layers it's very powerful and saves a lot of time in the next chapter I'm going to um, make a, a, a cutout of a model and with a very different uh, approach I'm going to use the, um, the saturation as base for my mask. In this chapter we are facing the, um, a nightmare for every masking operator. Um, it's this image here. Um, and we are going to use the saturation for creating a mask. So let's have a look at this, what makes this image so um, annoying for masking. It's the dress. The dress um, is really, um, it has fine, these fine details and well, every tool in Photoshop will have a hard time in masking this. Well, this is an image from our stock collection. Um, it already comes with a mask which I'm throwing away because I will create that mask by hand. So let's think about this image. We have a white background or a background that um, doesn't have 
a lot of color information. So if I go to my uh, channels, I will have the, the gray background and the gray background stays gray, but obviously the colors of the dress are changing when I click through it. So this is probably um, good to uh, mask on the red channel while the other ones are better on the blue channel and so it's going to be quite some steps to to create that but there is a, um, an a easier way and I'm uh, using a curve layer first to um, make the background really free of any color I mean I'm putting the gray point here with my with my pipette and going right next to the model. So now my background doesn't have any color information. So this is neutral gray. Neutral gray doesn't have any saturation information because all three channels are the same and if all three channels are the same it's going to be yeah neutral no saturation at all. But everything that has color does have saturation. So what I'm creating next is a UN saturation layer and I'm bumping up the saturation. So the difference between the saturated parts means the dress, the, um, um, the skin, everything gets more saturated than everything beyond this, uh, behind this. So increasing the saturation to make it more yeah, saturated. And now I'm creating a stamp of this by Alt, Control, Shift, E. This will make one layer out of everything. And now there is a filter and the filter other HSB, HSL. HSB, HSL means um, use saturation brightness or use saturation lightness. And I've got an input. The input is my, my image or my layer, just the RGB. So it has three channels, red, green and blue. And these three channels are now changed. So I have three channels, channels U, saturation and brightness. I click OK and it will look really strange now. But if I go to my channels, I've got three channels. I've got my red channel, this is the U channel. So all the, the red tones are black and um, yeah, this is just the uh, in, uh, information of the U channel. And the green channel is going to be my saturation channel and the blue one is my brightness channel. And if you look at the green channel, this looks pretty awesome because it has already has this um, bright, well, it's very contrasty and even these this slight things here have a lot of contrast. So I can use this for creating my mask. And I'm duplicating this layer and create here the green copy. And I go to my brush, Vivid Light 10%, make it a little bit larger, let's say 500 pixels, awesome. And I'm going to erase everything that's beside here, beside the model, on this side and this side. So, yeah, let's, let's clean it, it's okay. So, and here. I could use the pencil for this as well. Um, one thing with the pencil that's awesome is it's a real black, so that means um, uh, sometimes you miss a dark gray, a super dark gray, and you think it's black, but it's not. And if you use the pencil with 100% um, opacity, it will be black, so you can use that as well. So now I changed my white brush and I just paint over these areas. I want to have the, the skin obviously completely white. 
And as I showed before, I don't need to be super precise because the, the stuff is already um, black. So it has no saturation, so it will be not affected by this brush. <clears throat> However, it's, um, sometimes it's not 100% um, accurate. So if I have a slight color change in the background, for example, it will uh, not work that well, but well, I think it's still a super fast process. It needs a little bit of work here, but you can see where this is going. So everything that's white will be not transparent. Everything that's um, grayish will be partial, partial um, transparent. And everything that's black will be not visible in the image. So I don't try to make everything here uh, completely white. Um, so I need some of these um, of these grayish tones in this slide areas here. But I think you get the idea. And then I have some details where I can paint with my um, pencil tool. So. These black um, black hairs or black parts of the dress, you need to address them separately. You can't do this with a saturation mask because black doesn't have a, um, have saturation, so it will be um, uh, transparent in this example. But I think you get the idea. Also, this here. Well, you can do this with with a brush. Without any problems. So. Look at that mask. Isn't it gorgeous? Two minutes with talking. I'm impressed by myself. It's awesome. So, um, a control click on this creates, um, creates a selection and then I go back to my layers and I create a new folder and apply the mask here. This one, the, um, um, this Hue saturation and brightness image also as these two can go to the recycler. I don't need them anymore. And this is my mask where it can work. So I can use this to extract the model from the background. Let's see what it does if I fill this background with black. And as you can see, as you can see, let's go one step back. So, and zoom in a little bit. So this is a pretty decent job here. However, every time when you um, have in your image a white background and you do th some masking, you will get this annoying line. You will get them every time. So usually what you do is you um, use the blend modes to, to blend these areas. Um, then you get uh, a better result. But for, I don't know, for commercial work where you need um, a white background, for example, it will work pretty well. And also this transparent stuff will work pretty well. So let's have a look. This is the before and this is the after. And it does a pretty good job. You can, however, work on, on this layer. So if you think that you need more um, here in this area, I think it's a little bit too transparent. So you can see this is, um, there is some black and you can always go to the, to the brush and paint directly on that area. And it will still use the saturation information because this is the basis you have. And just paint in. It's a very nice process and it's not annoying and it's very, very easy. So this, this whole thing with um, vivid light is pretty powerful and you can really create a decent mask, especially when you do 
um, difficult stuff like this. Um, look at the hairs here. Look at look at this. This is it's just brilliant. Let's, uh, let's use a uh, green one as background. So look at this. This is a really nice masking job. So and. It keeps this, the, the transparency here and I mean I didn't take much care so I think if you put in some more minutes haha, then you will get a really really nice um, edge here and a really nice mask. So this is really straightforward, but I think you can you you understand the the process. So whatever you have as difference in your in your image, if it's saturation or the hue or or the the contrast in in luminosity or lightness or brightness, um, you can use that to create your masks and this is where the magic lies if you create your masks with channels because you can adjust your image until the channel is perfect for masking and then after you created your mask you just throw them away and so honestly um, every time when someone says well I have a masking problem then it's either not not doable like like this one here you see in in this area you see the problem with the um, transparent stuff in front of a white background and then colorize the background it will not work it will never work so you always have to deal with that manually but this is not a masking problem usually masking problems are um, it's just where you get the white line or where you just stick to painting and making and doing and nothing happens. So whenever someone has a masking problem I see a solution in masking with channels and in using utility layers, adjustment layers for the color. Yeah, and as I said, this is non-destructive, so if it doesn't work, well, do it again or throw the, uh, the channels away and can always paint on this. It's not a big deal. So if you need more, paint on the, on the layer. If you need less, paint with black on the layer. So, for example, this one, this is, well... I lost the part of the of the leg here, but anyways, I can always go back and use another channel for this. So let's switch this off. So let's see what we have here. This is just um, I've got some luminosity um, difference here. Can use the channel with the most difference, probably the black, uh, the blue channel. Duplicate the channel. And I'm going to use a levels here, so make this white, make the other one as dark as possible. And well, yeah, let's use this. So put this back. And now I can paint just with white here to get rid of parts in my selection. Not white, black, obviously with black. And I'm using the um, pencil instead of brush. Well, my selection here is, my selection has a transition, so it's not a, it's not a sharp edge, so I can really use the pencil and I still get this uh, semi-transparent stuff here because um, because that that selection that I took from my blue channel here from from this channel um, it has from this channel it has these uh, transparency informations so I can just paint over with a brush very very fast process 
And as I said, you will, um, the green is a very um, uh, tough example, but if you use something like a gray, it will just work perfectly. So and you will still get all the information here. So I think that's it. I hope you had some fun with that. And um, it was a pleasure to show you these, my favorite masking techniques. Obviously, most of the time I spend like 15 to 20 minutes in masking. And it does not depend on the image because it's always the same process. You create your channel, you use utility layers, and then you refine the edge. And it doesn't depend on the image because every image has something that you can increase and use it to create a decent channel out of it. So I hope you had some fun, uh, learned something. And if you uh, want to do us a favor, then share this image and keep it posted to your family and friends and image manipulation addicts. And take care of you. This was Stefan for Raw Exchange.